Hello everybody, it is Jess and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, I am here with a new book haul video. So last week it was my birthday. I am 27 now, which is scary because I still feel like I was 18 not that long ago. Um, and I feel really old. But as always with birthdays and Christmas, people gift me books. I never really ask for anything. Um, people just know that I like to read. So they buy me books, which, you know, I couldn't be more happy with. Um, I always have an Amazon wish list on the go. People refer to that. And I have been gifted some uh, really great books this year. So I've got six books here that were gifts. And then I've got five books here that I bought for myself um, because I did a little bit of uh, book shopping in London, uh, which was a lot of fun. And we'll get into that towards the end of the video. But uh, let's start with the books that were gifted to me. So first up, we have a book that was gifted to me by my lovely mother-in-law, my boyfriend's mum. She got me The Mad Woman's Ball. So this is by Victoria Mars. This is, uh, what is it? It's about an asylum and it's set in 1885. Um, it's set in Paris, which really appeals to me. Paris is in thrall to Dr. Charcot and his displays of hypnotism on women who have been deemed mad or hysterical, but the truth is more complicated. These women are often inconvenient, unwanted wives or strong-willed daughters. Once a year, a grand event is held, the Mad Woman's Ball. For the Parisian elite, it is the highest of the social season. For the women themselves, it is a rare moment of hope. We're following a character called Guinevere. I guess she goes to one of these balls. And yeah, I don't really know anything else about it other than that, but I have seen it floating around quite a lot on Bookstagram and Booktube. Um, people have had a lot of interesting things to say about it. Um, I'm interested to see um, how it depicts this period of history and uh, how it touches upon what it was like for women during that time. I think that'd be very interesting um, to read about. Um, but I didn't realise this book was this short. I've seen the hardback editions of it and I thought it was a lot bigger, um, but it's less than 200 pages or just over 200 pages. Um, so I think this will be a very quick read, but um, yeah, I'm very, very grateful to uh, my boyfriend's and mum for gifting me this and I'm looking forward to diving into it. So next we've got two books here that were gifted to me by my boyfriend's brother. Um, so the first one is uh, The Good Samaritan by John Mars. So they know that I love John Mars. I've read four of his books now and they've all either been four or five stars. I just, I just can't get enough of his writing and I do want to read more of his stuff. I do have The Vacation on my Kindle, which I'm really looking forward to reading. Um, but this it is uh, a book that I'm very excited about. I've heard really good things about it. It says, she's a friendly voice on the phone, but can you trust her? So that sounds very ominous right off the bat there. Um, the people who call end of the line need hope. They need reassurance that life is worth living. But some are unlucky enough to get through to Laura. Laura doesn't want them to hope. She wants them to die. I'm not going to read any more of the blurb because that just sounds really, sounds really awful. But I'm very intrigued. Um, I love reading about absolutely awful characters. Um, and reading stories from the perspective of awful people and seeing what it's like inside their heads. So yeah, very intrigued by that one, looking forward to it. And then they also got me Cujo by Stephen King, which I almost bought when I was in London last week um, because I love these Hodder edition covers. They're just stunning and I have a few of them now. And I have been wanting to add Cujo to my list for a while and I almost bought it when I was book shopping last week. And I'm, I'm glad that I didn't because I would have ended up with two copies, not that that's a bad thing. Um, but uh, Cujo is a dog. He chases a rabbit into a bolt hole 
Except it isn't a rabbit warren anymore, it's a cave inhabited by rabid bats. As Cujo falls sick, the gentle giant who once protected the family becomes a vortex of horror, inexorably drawing in all the people around him. I've heard mixed things about Cujo, but I know it is one of Stephen King's most prolific works, one of the ones that people go to when they're trying out horror. Um, so yeah, I don't know how I'd feel about this. I love dogs and I don't want to read stories about scary dogs, but I also want to read stories about scary dogs, you know, because I like being scared. So <laughs> I'm uh, probably going to save this one for Halloween time. I think that'd be the best time to read it. Um, and then the last three books on this list um, were all gifted to me by my lovely boyfriend. Um, he always does so well when it comes to getting new books. And it's funny because I actually kind of predicted two of the books that he was going to get me because I know what his tastes are like and I just know what kind of books he would go for if he were to read them himself. Um, so one of the first books that he got me is The X-Hex, which is really difficult to say. Um, this is by Erin Sterling. So this is not one that he would get himself uh, because this is a romance, but it's got a spooky twist on it. Vivian Jones handled the biggest breakup of her life the way that any witch would. Vodka, bubble baths and a curse on her ex. Um, sounds really fun. I think this came out last year. And I know a lot of people have read it and have really enjoyed it. Um, it's something a bit different. Um, you know, I've not really read a spooky romance before. I don't think I have. So this would be quite an interesting one to read. And again, it'd be perfect for those cosy nights in autumn when you want something spooky but kind of lighthearted at the same time. So the other two books are books that I predicted he would get me just because like I said, I know his tastes, I know what he's into. Uh, one of these is uh, this hilariously titled book called Man Fuck This House, and this is by Brian Azaman. So <laughs> I'd never heard of this book until I saw it on Amazon, and the title alone just made me put it on my wish list. Um, this is a haunted house story, and we are following Sabrina Haskins, who has moved in with her family into their dream home, a gorgeous craftsman in the rapidly growing southwestern city of Jackson Hill. Sabrina's a bored and disillusioned homemaker, Hal, a reverse mortgage salesman with a penchant for ill-timed sports and allergies. And their two children, Damien and Michaela, are bright and precious. Precocious. Precocious. I read that so wrong. <laughs> At first glance, the house is perfect, but things aren't what they seem. Sabrina's hearing odd noises, seeing strange visions, their neighbours are odd or absent, and Sabrina's already fraught relationship with her son is about to be tested in a way no parent could ever imagine, because while the Haskins family might be the newest owners of 4596 James Circle, they're far from its only residence. So it sounds really fun. Um, I think this is self-published. I believe it might be self-published. I'm not 100% sure, um, but either way, I'm really looking forward to it. It sounds really interesting. And that title is just, it just had me sold. Okay, so I'm very happy with that one. And then the other book that my boyfriend got me that I knew he was gonna get me because it is totally his thing um, is Empire of the Vampire by J. Kristoff. Look how big this book is. How many pages is it? I don't even know. Oh my gosh, I've just seen these amazing illustrations in it. How did I not know they were in there before? That is incredible. Like, yeah, it's over 700 pages. So it is a big beast, but um, I've never read anything by J. Kristoff before. A lot of people have been reading this recently and have been really, really enjoying it. It has been 27 long years since the last sunrise. For nearly three decades, vampires have waged war against humanity, building their eternal empire, even as they tear down our own. Now only a few tiny sparks of light endure in a sea of darkness. Gabriel de Leon, half man, half monster, and last remaining silver saint, sworn brother of the holy silver order dedicated to defending the realm from the creatures of the night is all that stands between the world and its end it just sounds like 
I'm gonna love it. I love reading about vampires, especially books about vampires that are at war with humans. Always really interests me. Don't read enough of that, so looking forward to that one. All right, so next we're gonna talk about um, the books that I bought for myself in London. So my boyfriend and I went to London for four nights. Uh, last week we went for my birthday. It was my first birthday out of lockdown after having spent the last two um, stuck indoors. So it was nice to be out and about and I made uh, the most of it and I went book shopping. I didn't visit as many bookshops as I would have liked to and I didn't buy as many books as I would have liked to but I guess that's a good thing because, you know, I would have ended up spending all of my money on books. <laughs> One of the first bookshops that we visited was Waterstones in um, Piccadilly. So this Waterstones is absolutely massive. I haven't been in a bookshop this big ever. I don't ever remember walking into a bookshop that had four, I think it had like five floors actually, five floors of books. And it was that big that they had signs on the walls telling you which floor to go for a specific genre. If you wanted non-fiction, you had to go up to like floor, floor three or something. Or if you wanted romance, it was uh, floor three or fancy or whatever. Um, and it even had like a cafe and a restaurant at the top, which we didn't go to. But I feel like if we'd had more time there, it probably would have. I could totally see myself just getting lost in that store which is not a bad thing. I would love to get lost in a bookstore. But um, yeah, I was like a kid in a sweet shop in there and I highly recommend you going if you are a fan of Waterstones. Um, I used my uh, Waterstones plus points card. So every time you buy a book, you scan, or every time you spend 10 pounds, sorry, you scan your card and you get a point for every 10 pounds you spend. And then once you get 10, stamps you get 10 pound credit you essentially get a free book so i bought one of these books and then i bought a book for free but they had a massive uh sci-fi fantasy horror section one of the biggest um fantasy sections i've ever seen in a waterstones my local waterstones in the city center has a very small <laughs> sci-fi fantasy um section most of them near me do so it was great just being in amongst all of these fantasy books and i saw so many books that i'd never heard of before so one of the books that i bought from that waterstones is a book that i have never heard of before and that is a natural history of dragons a memoir by lady trent um this is by marie brennan so i've never seen this book but the cover is what did it for me. Look how beautiful that cover is. It's absolutely stunning. And this is kind of like the fictional memoir of a woman who is known to be the world's preeminent dragon naturalist, who brought the study of dragons into the clear light of modern science. So I guess we're just following her on our adventures as she discovers dragons, as she learns about them, um, I love a good dragon story. I don't read enough of them. I used to read them a lot when I was younger. I loved fantasies with dragons in. So uh, this one I think I'm going to love. Um, so let me know if you've read this um, because I don't know anyone who has. Tell me what you thought of it. Then another book that I got from that Waterstones because again they had a big horror section and I was just in my element, um, The Book of Accidents by Chuck Wendig. So this is a very popular horror book that came out not too long ago. I think it came out like last year, maybe the year before. I know it was very recent. Um, and I have massive FOMO because, you know, I just feel like this is a book I need to read. If I'm a horror fan, if I say I'm a horror fan, which I'm becoming a horror fan, I feel like I need to read this. This is another haunted house story. Can't go wrong with one of those, or can you? I guess we'll find out. Long ago, Nathan lived in a house in the country with his abusive father and he has never told his family what happened there. Long ago, Maddie saw something she shouldn't have and she is trying to remember that lost trauma by making haunted sculptures. Haunting sculptures, sorry. 
And then long ago, something sinister, something hungry, walked in the tunnels, mountains and coal mines of their hometown in rural Pennsylvania. Now Nathan and Maddie are married and they have moved back to their hometown. And now what happened long ago is happening again and it is happening to their son. All right, so maybe it's not a haunted house story, more of like a haunted town, a ghost town, I don't know. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. I've heard really good things about it, so of course, it was an instant buy for me. So next we went to Foils, which is about a 20, 25 minute walk away from the Waterstones in Piccadilly. And again, Foils is a very well-known bookshop. They have a few dotted around London, but this one that I went to was massive. Again, four or five floors of books and they had a cafe at the top. So, you know, you could go in, buy a few books and sit at the cafe drink a coffee, drink a hot chocolate, cup of tea, get lost in your stories. It's kind of like the perfect, you know, the perfect day out for someone like me who likes to read. Really, really like this bookshop. Very cool design as well, you know, very sleek, very modern. Wasn't what I was expecting because I thought it was going to be um, a bit more, not all over the place, but I just had these kind of like old fashioned images in my head. I picked up two books from Foils. So the first one that I picked up was Sundial by Katrin Ward. And I'm so excited to finally have this. Look at those sprayed edges. That is just stunning. This is just a stunning, stunning book. Um, but it is also a signed edition. Where is it? There we go. So we've got her little signature there. Um, so I'm very happy to own this. I almost didn't buy it because it was on my Amazon wish list, and I wasn't sure if my boyfriend had bought it for me or not because I didn't open my presents until I got back from London. But he told me he hadn't bought it, so I nabbed it straight away. I'm very excited for this one. I loved The Last House on Needless Street last year, one of my favourite books of 2021. It was just phenomenal, atmospheric, beautiful writing, interesting story, great twists and turns. I'm expecting more of the same with this one. This follows a woman called Rob who fears for her daughters. Um, she's got a daughter called Callie and a daughter called Annie. Um, and she's scared because she's worried what Callie might do to Annie. Callie is doing some like weird things. She's um, exhibiting some strange behaviour. So Rob takes her kids back to um, her childhood home in Sundial, which is in the Mojave Desert. Um, and that setting of the desert just sounds really interesting. I, I feel like it's going to be a very intense and atmospheric read. Um, I'm very intrigued by this cover. I wonder if, what is it, a wolf? Is it a wolf? Or a hyena or a jackal? Something, I wonder if that's gonna play into the story. It'd be quite cool if it did. All right, so the last book that I got from Foils um, is Rich People Problems by Kevin Kwan. I have Crazy Rich Asians and I'm really in the mood to read it, but I wanna binge the entire trilogy. You know, there are three books in the series and I want to binge them all. So these were the two books, the other two books, um, Rich People Problems and China Rich Girlfriend, that I was looking for. I looked for them in Waterstones, in Piccadilly, they didn't have them. Went to Foils and they had this one, but they didn't have China Rich Girlfriend. Um, but I was like, I'll buy it anyway. And um, I'll get China Rich Girlfriend online or from another shop. Um, when I get home or something like that. So I got that from Foils, but then on our way home, or as we were waiting for the train to go back to Leicester, we were at St Pancras, they have a Hatchards there. So Hatchards is another well-known bookshop in London. They have one in Piccadilly. So while we were waiting for the train, because we got there really early, we were like, let's go and have a look around some shops. And we went in this bookshop and lo and behold, they had China Rich Girlfriend by Kevin Kwan. So I managed to get the two books that I was looking for, both from different bookshops, but I managed to get them. So now that I have all three books, I can binge the entire series. And I'm really looking forward to it because I've heard really good things about um, Crazy Rich Asians. Um, and now that it's coming up to summer, I just, I feel like it'd be the perfect um series to dive into so yeah 
super happy with those i love the covers as well and i had a great time shopping in london and um, buying books there are a few other places i would recommend going as well one of them is forbidden planet uh, we didn't go there this time but we've been there previously and it's on Shaftesbury Avenue and if you go down to the basement level um, they have uh, a bookstore there. Um, they predominantly sell sci-fi fantasy horror um, and then they have graphic novels, manga, comic books but I always recommend going there if you are a sci-fi or fantasy fan um, because they have a great selection of new releases and backlist books and um, editions of things that you might not have seen before. And then another bookshop that we visited, I didn't buy anything from, but I, we did visit um, on the first day of our trip actually, just outside Kew Garden Station. Um, and it was called the Kew Bookshop. Uh, this is a cute little independent bookshop and they had a lot of um, really cool titles, some new releases as well, some backlist stuff. It's not massive and it does get quite crowded in there, um, but I thought it was really cute. So I would recommend going there as well and, you know, you can support um, local booksellers. I think they're on bookshop.org, I believe they are. I think I've seen them on there before. I will have to double check that. Um, but yeah, I thought it was a really cute little bookshop. So I would recommend going there as well and giving them a visit, buying something from them if you are in the area. There were a lot of bookshops that I did see, a lot of secondhand bookshops and independent bookshops um, that I can't remember the name of. But, you know, there's lots around the Piccadilly area, um, Shavesbury Avenue, that I would encourage you to go to if you want to do a bit of book shopping in London. So... There we go. All right, guys, so those are all the books that I received for my birthday or bought for myself. And I am so excited to get into all of them. You already know, I say it all the time, but it's true. And hopefully they all live up to my expectations. So having said all of that, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. Please feel free to leave in the comments below um, if you've read any of the books that I have talked about in today's video and what you thought of them, if you think there are any that I should get to pretty soon, because I always love to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, you can leave a cheeky thumbs up if you like this video because it really does help with the channel. You can also subscribe and you can hit the bell button so you will be notified every single time I do upload. and. Yeah, having said all of that, I will see you all in my next video very soon. Bye, guys.